How's it going everybody? Chris Kelly here with ProductionCrate.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to add fake wind to your footage. I really like this effect. <laughs> ah! Maybe just throw it off the balcony. <laughs> I think fake wind on clothing actually looks better than real wind. Usually we're always about using practical effects whenever possible. Practical lighting, practical wind, practical elements are usually the better way to go. But there's something about digital wind that I really like. When you use a leaf blower, it's usually very unidirectional. But with digital wind, it looks like it could come from the subject itself. So you get that kind of like anime wind looking stuff that I think is just really pleasing to the eye and really interesting. So digital wind is a nice and subtle effect, but it's really, really easy to achieve. And I'm gonna show you how you can pull it off today with just a couple very basic assets that you can download from footagecrate.com or build yourself if you want to. So I built out these 4K looping fabric assets and we do have one for free, this one down here. So these assets are what drive the entire effect. They're pretty basic looping fabric assets that I built inside of Cinema 4D that it's essentially just a gray fabric material with an overhead light. What these are gonna do is essentially fake a depth map. So if you're familiar with depth maps, they're images where the closer towards camera, the brighter they are and the further away, the darker they are, kind of like a Z depth pass. So to simplify that, let's just jump into After Effects, which I make my company go. Uh, comp cool. Comp, <laughs> comp cool and dimensions, 1920 by 1080. And I'm gonna drag in this image that I found online. All right, so I'm just gonna start with an image instead of footage because I think it's gonna be a little simpler to explain, but the steps are the exact same. So I found this dude with a yellow jacket. I like it a lot, but I wanna get his jacket to move. So the best way to do that is to create those looping fabric animations, or if you have a footage create account, either free or pro, just go ahead and download one. I think this is the one I'm gonna use right here. So this is my dude with the yellow jacket layer. I'm gonna create a copy by hitting Control D, and then I'm gonna select that copy as well as my looping fabric effect, and I'm going to pre-compose them together, and I'll just call this fabric layer. And let's jump into that pre-comp. And now I'm going to right click on my image layer and let's set it as a guide layer. And a guide layer just means it's not going to render and it's not going to appear in any other comp. It is just a guide layer, which is gonna help us do our rotoscoping or whatever other effects we wanna add. I find the easiest way to do this is instead of rotoscoping the actual footage, I'm just gonna create a new solid. So Control Y and I'll call this matte and I'll disable the visibility, zoom in, and then hit G to bring up my masking tool, and then I'm just gonna speed through this process, just mask around my dude really, really quickly. Just gonna do a very crappy, very horrible mask. So here's my mat, and it looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna drag my fabric layer underneath that mat, and I'm gonna turn on the visibility of it, and let's go over to track mat, and I'm gonna set it as an alpha mat. <laughs> and let's scale it down. Let's just adjust the scale, move it around, and we can kind of see how it's gonna be working here. So I can already see some potential issues. We don't want it to look super, super flat, but just so you can see how it gets working right away, this is what we're gonna use. And if I play it out, that's essentially our fabric animation. So jumping back into our main comp, we'll see our fabric animations all set up there. Okay, here's some of the magic. So one of my favorite blending modes that I recently discovered is soft light. And what that essentially does is anything that is a gray solid that is 50% black is not gonna be visible at all. Anything that is brighter or darker than that, than that midpoint that we're defining is gonna be visible. So that's how we're going to kind of add in the highlights and the shadows that are pre-baked into our fake displacement map here. So I'm just gonna change this blending mode to soft light. There we go. And right now, just on one frame, it doesn't really look like it did anything. And that's actually a good thing. We want it to be subtle and we want it to fit in and feel like it's already composited nicely onto our footage. But if we hit play, we should see some shadows and highlights moving which we do. But now what we need is some displacement. 
that's pretty easy to do. Of course, let's create a new adjustment layer. So control alt Y, and I'm gonna add a displacement map effect to that adjustment layer. And for my displacement map layer, let's select the fabric layer and let's change the red and green to say luminance. And let's bump that up to give me a number higher than 15, Nico. Uh, 16. <laughs> 16 it is. <laughs> I would have gone a little higher, but that's cool. All right, 16, 16. And if we play that out, suddenly our fabric is moving. And I mean, that's, that's the basic of the effect. It really is that easy, but you might be saying, well, that, that looks fine, but it looks very, very flat to me. And that's where you come in. The basics of the effect is always gonna be pretty easy to grasp, but then kind of creating the complexity and making it feel more realistic is up to the compositor. So if I'm looking at this and I see, okay, it looks really, really flat. I need to add some depth to it. One good way to do that is to pay attention to tension. Fabric is gonna have a lot of tension where it's very close to maybe a hard surface and it's gonna be very loose in some areas where it's gonna billow. So just using what we currently have without adding in additional fabric, I'm going to actually start removing some of that displacement and removing some of that fabric motion. And that's gonna give it that kind of tension feel and it's gonna to start to feel like the fabric isn't just one flat piece. So temporarily, I'm just going to turn off the visibility. Actually, let's just turn down the opacity of my fabric layer, put it at 40%. Cool. So I say right here, right in the middle of the spine where there's this seam, I think it would be a little less billowy there. I think maybe here on the shoulders as well, and then maybe on the head. All these areas, I'm going to actually remove the fabric. I'm going to do that by adjusting my mat as well. That way, if we ever wanna swap out our fabric in the future, we can do that without worrying about masks being affected because we're using an alpha mat. So now with my mat layer selected, I'm gonna hit Q, hit it again until I find my sphere mask. I'm just gonna draw a sphere right here in the middle of the spine. Let's just adjust that. And then I'm going to make this subtract. Perfect, and let's just feather it out. And then let's just draw masks over the arms and the head here. G, and I'm just gonna keep it really loose. Now, of course, you don't have to use any rotoscoping or masking techniques. If there's any other way you want to remove your subject from the footage and use it as a mat, you can. Someone on Twitter mentioned using composite brush. Any technique like that is gonna work perfectly. So I'm gonna make these two masks subtract as well. And let's cut his noggin off too. I'd say let's keep a little fabric movement in it. Just gonna draw a mask like here. And that way there's still a little movement in the fabric. So again, I'm just drawing masks around the areas that I don't want any fabric movement to be happening. Maybe at the top of his shoulders here, the wind would be passing a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna leave a little extra fabric visible there. And let's remove this section here. Subtract. And then I'm just gonna feather these masks out again. F for feather and say 25 feather. And I'm gonna bring my fabric layer up to 100%. And I'm just gonna solo it so you can see what's happening here. So now this is what our fabric looks like. And I mean, as you can see, it looks pretty bad. You would not think you would get good results from this. But without even testing it out, I'm going to unsolo it and jump back into my main comp. And I feel pretty confident that it's gonna work great because this technique is extremely forgiving. If you're a very lazy artist like I am, this technique is perfect for you because you get great results and you don't have to work that hard for it. All right, let's check it out. There you go, that looks awesome. That looks like moving wind. Nico, you wanna take a look? Yep. What do you think? Oh, wow, look at that. There you go. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it really is that easy. And the nice thing about this, the way we have it set up is we thought ahead a little bit we made things procedural. So if for whatever reason, I wanna make changes to this wind, everything is on that alpha mat. So let's say I prefer the fabric to be a little more over here because I see a little bit more tension. I really can just select and move that layer around, jump back into my main comp, and everything is still working exactly the way we wanted it to be. But I just showed you the very basics of this idea. If you have any After Effects experience, you can take it to an entire new level. I just wanna to touch on one last thing before I let you go. So let's solo my fabric layer again. 
So right now we're using soft light. So that's again, just splitting the dark and the highlight areas. If we want more control over our lighting, we can try different blending modes and we can use curves or levels to really isolate either the highlights or the shadows. So I'm gonna disable my soft light for now. And let's just say it's like, an extremely overcast day where there would be like no highlights. So instead of soft light, we would want to use, Nico, any ideas? Multiply. All right, perfect, multiply. So let's try multiply and I'll turn my layer back on. So right now that actually looks pretty horrible, right? Our shadows are visible, but it's like a really, really dark splotch. That's fine. If we just throw on, I'm gonna do curves because I prefer that over levels. And let's drop this on our multiply layer. And I'm gonna brighten it up. And I'm just gonna do it until I'm happy with the look of the shadows, say maybe around there. So now we have no added highlights, but we do have some shadows in this scene. I don't think it works that well because I do like what the highlights are adding, but that's how we would add shadows only. But let's say now I wanna add some highlights and still have a level of control. I'm gonna duplicate that multiply layer. I'm gonna change it to screen and I'm going to reset my curves and instead of brightening it up, I'm gonna make it a lot darker. Let's solo that so I can see what I'm doing here. So I made it darker, but I'm gonna give it a little S curve as well. So those are the highlights that we're gonna be adding right there. Pretty intense, but let's see what it looks like. So those highlights are very, very bright, but I think we can actually get it to work. So I'm gonna add a tritone effect. I'm gonna steal highlights from my actual image here. I'd say the brightest part would be this yellow right here for mid-tone, this yellow, and then shadows, almost a reddish color. Let's copy that tritone and apply it to our multiply uh, layer as well. And let's see if this looks at least okay. Let's drop the opacity of the screen layer because that still looks a little too intense to me. Let's drop it to 50%, play it out. I don't hate it. I think I prefer the soft light effect overall, but this is kind of a cool different look and it's gonna give you a lot more control if you're not happy with the soft light results. All right, everybody, I hope you understand how you can use these fabric animations for your own awesome uh, wind effects. Again, it's super, super easy to do. If you do end up using it on social media or anywhere, just tag us in it. We'd love to see it. We also have a Discord where if you need feedback or any guidance, just post there and then one of us will help you out. All right, creators, that does it. Remember to make it awesome.